Hey everyone, welcome to Major Frenchie's Workshop. Today I'm going to demystify what virtual pinball is. What is virtual pinball? Folks, it is not complicated. Virtual pinball is playing pinball software on a personal computer or even on a console like a PS4 or a PS5. Why is virtual pinball so complicated? Why people are fighting about table hosting? Where can I get the software and hardware for all this? These are the different questions that we will answer in this video. Most people, when they're starting virtual pinball, they have to ask two questions. Do I have the space for this? And how much do I want to spend in this? Depending on how much space or how much money you're going to invest, that might dictate what kind of setup you're going to get. For example, a lot of virtual pinball fans are on desktop. And this is actually a very good way to get started uh, with your virtual pinball experience. Virtual pinball, there are really three different approaches that you got to ask yourself. Do I just want a desktop setup? And if that's the case, uh, I'm going to have suggestions for you. Another uh, approach uh, is, well, you can build with a desktop in mind first and hoping to transition to a cab eventually. So that will actually impact the type of hardware that I would suggest you are going with. And lastly, uh, it, you may just decide to just bite the bullet. Uh, if you have the money, if you have the space in your basement, you can start with building your virtual pinball with a cabinet. For people starting with a desktop, I'm going to try to simplify things uh, because choices always adds to the complexity. Uh, having choice is nice, but having choice means that you need to evaluate all these choices and make a decision. For desktop users, I would actually recommend the following. I would suggest a two screen setup, one for the play field and one for the back glass. The PC, I would recommend a mid-range PC with a decent graphic card, maybe a 2 gigabyte uh, graphic cards or whatever you can afford, and 2 HDMI output. For the size of screens, well, again, it will really depend on, on the space you have and how you want it to look. Uh, I mean, I would say that a 24-inch uh, monitor uh, for your play field uh, a monitor mounted on a pivot would be ideal because you can still use your, your desktop monitor as a regular monitor when you're not using pinball. And then when you decide to use pinball, you can just pivot the, uh, the play field and use it in portrait mode. And that way you're going to get a better virtual pinball experience. I would also maybe suggest as a back glass, maybe you can just use a 17-inch monitor uh, for displaying the score and the images on the back glass. If you want to build a cab, starting with the desktop setup, but your ultimate goal is to transition to a cabinet, I would have to make some different choices. Unless you want to repurchase the screen and the hardware, well, you can actually just use a 40-inch uh, TV or a 43-inch TV uh, or a 4K TV for the play field and maybe a 28 or a 32 1080p background monitor. Uh, that would be sufficient. Now, you will now, need a higher-end computer if you decide to run a 4K display because a 4K display is very hungry and you will need a better graphics card. So I would suggest start with something like an NVIDIA 1080 and that should be good uh, for the time being. Uh, 8 to 12 gig of RAM, uh, maybe an i5 processor, I would personally use a two terabyte solid state drive or even M.2 type of hard drive. Those are great setups. And finally, if you want to build directly a cab, you basically have three options. Build your own, uh, you can buy a kit, or you can buy a used pinball machine and strip it and rebuild it as you like. How do I install the software? What is it? And how much does it cost? And where can I get it? 
those are all legit and very important questions. How much does it cost? Free. It's free. Uh, there's no cost associated to this unless you, if you're deciding to purchase some commercial pinball software such as FX3 or Pinball Arcade, then you will have to purchase the table to put on your computer. Visual Pinball, Future Pinball uh, are not paid commercial solutions. They're for your own purpose. They're to be used on your own cabinet. These tables cannot be used in resale or in commercial cabs. Uh, this is actually goes against all the terms of service. But if you're using it on your cabinet, it is free. When you have choices, like I said, it always complicates the decision making process. Nailbuster created an easy installer that combines all the essential basic virtual pinball software. Its baller installer has the following installed. Visual Pinball, Pin Event, Future Pinball, Flex DMD, BAM, and Pin Up Popper. It uh, has a Freezy and two authorized table that are pre-installed. If I can actually recommend something to you folks, uh, if you start with the idea of playing virtual pinball in five minutes, although Baller is capable of doing that, but I would take time to read and watch tutorials. Don't start asking in forums or Facebook or Discord after your first failure. Keep trying, folks. I mean, this is a hobby. You got to keep reading and testing. Everyone actually went through exactly what you're going through. You need patience. Where can you obtain all the software from? Well, you can obtain everything pretty much from VP Universe, VP Forums, Rav Arcade, uh, the Pinup Popper Wiki, uh, the Baller Installers actually on the Discord Virtual Pinball Chat, and there are a few authorized, I call them authorized, websites. Why are people fighting about table hosting and why can just we really ask for tables in public? The hobby exists because people are making tables. Uh, the day there won't be any new tables being created, the hobby will die, plain and simple. At the end, the author gives a table to the community with really one condition. Respect his wish by downloading from a location of his choice so he can see all reviews, maintain the updates on the table, and get some feedback. Some people have the balls to take all those tables host them somewhere without authorization from the authors and ask money and tip for the service. This is more than just redistribution without consent. It's called fraud. So this is what the fuss is all about. If you want to get started in this wonderful hobby of virtual pinball, do it right by joining and being an active member of official virtual pinball sites, blogs, Facebook, Discord, and by refusing, encouraging people making money uh, from the author's work. Next topic is force feedback. What is force feedback? Well, this is something a desktop user and a cab user can use to enhance the virtual pinball experience. A real pinball machine, as you know, has some very cool and unique features, such as solenoid shakers, uh, some of them have fans and lights. Virtual Pinball comes with a solution to try to enhance the experience and it's called force feedback using DOF. To simplify, you can install hardware such as a shaker motor that will work with the Virtual Pinball table. See I have the uh, adjustment button here so I can actually tune that make it louder or weaker depending on how I want the table to feel. So I like this. What do I need to start using force feedback? This is where all the confusion may start and I will try, I say try, to demystify the terms and requirements and application. Number one, you need toys. What do I mean by toys? We call them toys because they're additional, they're modules, they're hardware that you can add to your table, such as a shaker motor, solenoids, fan, 
strobe, gear motor. Number two, you will need DOF. DOF stands for Direct Output Framework. You're going to need to install this and it has to be functional in order for the uh, table to send the signal to your controller to turn on and off the device. For example, in Attack from Mars, when you're hitting the saucer in the middle, the shaker motor will start vibrating. <laughs> All right, we liberated the U.S., now it's France. If you want to know which toys are available and what table, you can check the Direct Output Framework site. In the Stats menu, you will see all effects available for any given table. Number three, you will need a controller. What does it do? Well, it turns the effect on and off, just like a light switch, but electronically. Having choices is good. When it comes to controllers, oh my god, do we ever have choices. The choice will really depend on you. So my best advice would be to familiarize yourself with the advantages and the inconvenience of each type of controller. For example, we have, as a controller, you can use LED Wiz. You can use a KL25Z. You can use the Pinscape extension board. You can use some of Arno's boards, such as the KL Shield. You can use a Saint Smart. You can use solid state relay board. You can use Zeb boards. So you see how confusing that is? How can it be less confusing? Learning to know what you need is going to be key. Uh, Learn what each board has to offer and how much money you are ready to spend. I cannot explain all the features of all boards. This would be a very lengthy video and article, but I can explain to you what those boards have in common. Uh, they are all designed to add force feedback to your cabinet. I will use just an example, uh, the KL25Z. This board uh, allows you to connect buttons, LEDs, and toys to your cabinet. The KL25Z is not designed to power devices that are more than 400 milliamps. So, like the LED Wiz is 500 milliamps. So, how do you connect a solenoid, for example, that requires one amp? Well, this is where the choices become even more com complicated because you will need to boost the signal in order for the board to send, you know, the trigger signal to the solenoid. And for this, well, you will need extra hardware, like a MOSFET board or some sort of booster boards. Uh, I have an article here. If you visit this, uh, it's actually a, a thread on VP forums. Someone actually asked the question, since the Pinscape board all-in-one is no longer available, we have our master or guru, MJR, that actually wrote the uh, Pinscape guide. Uh, he's the guy that actually created the Pinscape software. Uh, thanks a lot, Michael, by the way. Uh, your work, my friend, is so much appreciated by everyone. You can read what Michael has to say about this. He's got links. So that's a good thread to read if you, uh, you're you asking about, you know, kind of what to use and whatnot. Well, in conclusion, folks, well, no one would ever expect you to look at a car engine and look at the car schematic and say, oh, yeah. I need to change a carburetor, this is how I'm going to do it. You're going to need to find what a carburetor looks like. What does it do? What's the purpose and how to change them? This takes time and burning step will only add time to the successful completion of the project. Guys, in the next few weeks I will start a new build from an existing mini pinball and I will add toys to them. If you want to learn how to get your machine set up, the upcoming videos are going to be very useful to you. Uh, I'm going to do wiring. I'm going to do setting up solenoids. I'm going to use the, the controller board. Uh, I'm going to use Arno's board for the this project. And uh, hopefully uh, it can help you in the build of your own system. I hope I demystified the concept of virtual pinball. Uh, don't get mad, folks. Uh, it is complicated. That's electronics. 
It's a complex project and basically what I try to accomplish here is not allow you to completely grasp virtual pinball just by watching this video. It's just an introduction as to what to expect in your project. I'm sure you'll have more questions about your build. Well, if you do, come and talk to us on the Discord. Uh, virtual Pinball Chat is actually the place where we chat about hardware, software, solution, fixes. You can download the Baller installer and you can just say hi to pretty much the whole community. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video. Ciao.